I've always been fascinated with quickness and speed. That's probably because as a soccer player, playing all my life, uh, I found those two attributes very beneficial to being a great soccer player. But today I'm going to give you an example from my college years and it's related to business. And so when I was in college, I was looking to make some quick cash and so I decided I had this crazy idea to apply for a job at a shipping company. So I went there, I went to their office and there was a huge long line of trying to you know, apply for a job. So I'm like, that's nah, not going to work for me. So I went around, I sneaked into the facility, found the foreman and I'm in my suit and everybody there is loading up these trucks and moving a lot of cargo. I walk up to him, I find out who he is and I said, my name is Demir, blah, blah, blah. And uh, I'm looking for a job. And he goes, what kind of job? I'm like, I'm willing to, you know, work at night moving stuff. So he looks at me kind of like, okay. I guess it maybe was an experiment for him. So he gives me a job. I work at night from midnight to 8 o'clock, 8 a.m. in the morning. And it's hard. It's moving basically. All these uh, trucks are coming in. It's like a, it's a cross docking facility where you have all these different 18 wheelers come in and you're taking a product from one uh, 18 wheeler and putting it into different uh, trucks. So one inbound, one outbound. So you're just like moving a lot of weight and you know I'm probably one of the smallest guys there because uh, you know I'm a soccer player and all these rest of these people are like six foot six you know like you could tell they can lift uh, a thousand pounds but, but the irony is that the foreman was very surprised because I could move a lot of weight and the reason is because I use my soccer legs to move weight so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use an example from my college years on how to show you how warp speed startup strategies can increase uh, any operation of the business, whether it's in engineering or operations, logistics, you name it. But and how we're going to start is we're going to just basically draw a quadrant. Okay? And this quadrant, I'm going to do it really quickly, is going to have hopefully seven trucks here, okay? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so truck one is here, truck two is here, truck three, truck four, truck five, truck six, and truck seven. And so on this side, you're gonna have on the y-axis is all these different trucks are coming at the same time. And you're also gonna assume that for each truck, just like we, I did when I was during, during the college years, um, they actually, for whatever reason, they always allocated me, myself, and me to do one truck, while everybody else had two people working on a truck. I guess they thought that a college kid, especially from uh, a rich school like SMU, could not do this. Uh, so basically, we're going to assume that for each truck, the assumption is that it's going to take one employee X amount of time to do one truck. Okay. So you could, you could do it as a function of hours, days, but it's obviously a function of time. So this could be day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, day six, and day seven. So now, there's a couple ways of looking at this, and this is what happens a lot in startups or any large corporation, is that you could allocate one person, and let's make an assumption that one person, it takes them seven, seven days to unload each, a truck, their truck. So what you could do is you could have one person work on this one truck and they're going to be done in seven days. But let's make an assumption that each person, because they can work on one truck at a time, they could form teams. So let's say in this case it's all seven people are in one team and they focus on one truck at a time, which is basically the principles coming from the Toyota production system, single piece flow. And so each, each team, in this case it's the team of all seven, focuses on unloading the first truck, which means that it's done in day one, unloading the second truck, which is day two, third, day three, and so on, okay? So basically what happens here is that day seven, the team of seven employees is unloading the seventh truck, which took the same amount of time as if the seventh employee would have done it themselves. So what does this really mean? What this really means is that this is a great way to increase the speed of your business by having a team of people focus on one truck at a time. 
And now you can change this truck to a product. Okay? And as a startup, obviously you're not, most likely, are not going to have seven products you're trying to develop at the same time. But there's always an issue of X amount of products you want to put out into the market. In fact, the quickest way to market is to focus on one product. The problem sometimes is that you don't know which of the seven products you should focus on. So this is really a case of maybe you have the entire team of seven people focus on one product and then as you put that one out you focus on the second one. Here are the benefits of this. Okay, If you take this concept and you take the seven people, a couple of things happens. First of all, co-location is critical. Okay, so basically you get a bunch of people in one room and you let them work really hard. Okay, that, that's very critical to any uh, speed of product development, uh, develop, increasing the speed of any startup or any type of uh, innovation. Number two is that what happens is cross-functional. Components come into play. Okay, and what I mean by that is that you get a person from marketing, you get a person from sales, you get a person from engineering, manufacturing, and all that, all band together to develop a product. In this case, when it comes to moving trucks, uh, the different seven people that you might have in getting the product out of the truck and putting it into different trucks, maybe one is six foot six and they can lift, you know, 500 pounds. And they can take the big stuff and move it to another truck. So cross-functional is very important. The other component is that uh, the communication between all members decreases substantially. So what happens is that when people are co-located together, obviously the communication becomes very dense. And so you're able to communicate with each other much quicker than if you were in different types of departments or even different locations. So now you're going to get information flowing between all the members much quicker, which is going to increase the speed of development, whatever process you're at. Okay. So what happens now is that also is that as you have product X going down this way and time is this way, okay, there comes a point that when you develop the first product and then you develop the second and then third, it could be a feature as an example, an added feature, an added module. You could look at spin this out any way you want. Is that at some point the market is going to tell you whether it likes those products. So what happens is that you could come to the truck number three or product number three and decide that product four to seven actually is not, not something that the market wants. So basically you can just X that out and develop new products. And so what happens is that when you focus on one product at a time as an example, okay, P1, and you finish that one, then you go with P2, and then you go with P3, the market at some point will tell you whether they like these products, and if they don't, you move and you shift to something else. So not only are you increasing the speed of developing a product or doing anything, you're also increasing the ability to predict whether the market will accept whatever your value proposition is. This looks simple and I can tell you that having invested into a lot of companies myself and started a lot of companies, that it's not done as often as you think. And all this really comes back from the Toyota production principle which is single piece flow between different processes. So you could look at it that way as well. You could look at it and say that you've got process one and then you have two and then you have three. Okay, And instead of working on all these different products in a batch mode, you're actually just basically saying let me develop whatever the product one is first, move it to the second process, and then once it's done here, I focus on product two, and I move it here, and while this one is being developed, of course, you're moving it down the line towards launch. 
So there's different ways to look at it, but in reality, bottom line is that how you allocate your people and your resources and what you focus on can make the difference between making it and failing. So this is why startups can beat big companies because a lot of comp large corporations have people in different cross in different functional departments like marketing, sales, and all that. And you have to go through all these different steps trying to get everybody to work on a product. Of course, the theory of uh, um, uh, speed of development, all these different theories in terms of increasing the speed of development have been improved over the years, but it still has a way to go. And one of the things that I still find today is that the inability of entrepreneurs to allocate their resources to get something done first and move on to the next step. Until next time.